Selma Blair, The Interview. Here's Robin Roberts. How are you doing? I am doing very well. I am very happy to see you being able to, you know, just put, put out what being in the middle of an aggressive form of multiple sclerosis is like. Selma Blair has a message for the world. Multiple sclerosis may have affected her voice, but not the power of her words. When I first got MS, I had no idea what it was or how it would affect me. And so my speech, as you'll notice, is uh, I have sp spasmodic dysphonia right now. It is interesting to put it out there, to be here to say this is what my particular case looks like right now. And it could be very different in a year f for the better. The actress speaking for the first time about the disease she's been battling for years. That's called a snowflake disease because it's different like a fingerprint for everyone. Wow. Not one size fits all. Wow. On Sunday, Selma made an emotional return to the red carpet. Take your time. For the first time since going public with her diagnosis four months ago. Attending the Vanity Fair Oscar party with the support of her customized cane. It took so much. A moment of triumph. We love you, Selma. Her tears of happiness earning cheers from the press line. The actress became a household name in movies like Legally Blonde, The Sweetest Thing, and of course, Are you for real? Cruel Intentions. You want to learn or not? Sarah Michelle Gellar, one of my dearest, called this morning and said I'm really helping to change people's lives. I can't bend my left leg well. For years, her illness was a mystery. The 46-year-old suffering troubling symptoms. She says doctors didn't take her seriously, so she developed her own coping mechanisms. I was drinking. I was in pain. I wasn't always drinking, but there were times when I couldn't take it, and I was really struggling with how am I going to get by in life, and not taken seriously by doctors. Single mother, you're exhausted. Financial burden, blah, 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 hormonal, premenopausal, postmenopausal. I mean, I don't think no one said, maybe we should get an MRI. Maybe we should just check it out. You would ask for that and they would I just would, And they just would say, no, 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 we should probably. And I even got to the point where I said, I need to go to work and I have to stay awake. I dropped my son off at school a mile away. And before I got home, I'd have to pull over and take a nap. And I was ashamed and I was doing the best I could and I was a great mother, but it was killing me. MS is a chronic, often unpredictable disease of the central nervous system, which is made up of the brain, spinal cord, and optic nerves. It can cause problems with vision, balance, and muscle control. Before she was diagnosed, Selma sought out the help of fellow actor Michael J. Fox, who has lived with Parkinson's disease for nearly 30 years. I reached out to him before I was diagnosed, and I DM'd him. And I said, I don't know who to tell, but I'm dropping things. I'm doing strange things. I have a tremor. My pinky won't stop moving. My leg, I can't feel. It's bouncing. And I said, I'm sorry if this is inappropriate. I didn't know who to turn to. And I don't know him. It was because he was a celebrity that was an actor that came out that's still working, that talks about it. He got in touch with me, and we began a conversation and my MS hits in spots that make it very Parkinsonian. Plus, I was like, I have Michael J. Fox's email now. <laughs> like, I'm pretty cool. Like, I'm cooler than I thought. Wouldn't it be funny if I fell in? I know. For real? <laughs> Not really. After years of suffering, it was a fall in front of a doctor that eventually led to her diagnosis last August. When you were first diagnosed, what initially went through your mind? I cried. I had tears. I wasn't, they weren't tears of panic. They were tears of knowing I now had to give in to a body that had loss of control. And there was some relief in that because ever since my son was born, I was in an MS flare up and didn't know. And I was giving it everything to seem normal. I wasn't totally worried, but I did have about 10 minutes of crying and then immediately got on the phone with my manager because I had to be in Atlanta the next day to finish a movie. The basic cause of MS is still unknown, but experts say it's at least two to three times more common in women 
than men. How difficult was it to share it with your son? Not at all. But he had already seen that I was falling and doing things, and I was always laughing, and he'd imitate me. And I'd be like, that's fine, but don't do that out of the house. People think you're a jerk. And so I did have to tell him after the MRI, I said, I have something called multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. And he almost cried and said, will it kill you? And I said, no. I mean, we never know what kills us, Arthur. But this is not the doctor telling me I'm dying. And he was like, oh, okay. And that was it. For Selma, her diagnosis has also given her a new mission. If I can help anyone or help anyone be more empathetic to someone that, that might seem uh, like me or a lot worse, God forbid, then, you know, that's the least I can do right now. She's hoping to create a line of adaptive clothing for people with disabilities. Well, I think people need the confidence to not feel invisible once mm. you have an illness. Beautiful. That is kind of where my mindset is, you know. And she's still an actress, people. I'm still an Hashtag actress. still an actress. Mama <laughs> still got to bring home the bacon. I'm a single mom. And Selma is still working, part of an upcoming sci-fi drama series on Netflix called Another Life. What propelled me to really come forward was authentic gratitude for all the people that were holding my secret at Netflix and on the movie After. When it's a huge thing for people with disabilities, minor or major, that you can still find a way, hopefully if you believe and persist, to still get to work. Over that left shoulder. Her message of perseverance coming through at that emotional Vanity Fair red carpet on Sunday, moving even the press. Getty photographer Mike Coppola quickly snapped this powerful image, sharing his story on Instagram saying, quote, she turned around, put her left hand in the air and paused for a second as she was determined to take control of her body. I took my favorite shot of the night right then and captured one of the most vulnerable human moments I have been a part of. What are doctors telling you? What's, what's your prognosis? The doctor I saw, he said within a year, I could have, at the time, he said, 90% of my abilities back. So this is, this mm -hmm. is to say, let's meet again next year and see if I'm better, if I'm not. And I can still have a conversation that's good enough. I was a little scared of talking. And even my neurologist said, no, this will bring a lot of awareness because no one has the energy to talk when they're in a flare up. Mm -hmm. But I do. Because I love a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, baby, you got a date. I'll see you in a year. Okay. 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 It's a deal. I can't wait. And Vanity Fair's feature on Selma Blair is live on their website, VanityFair.com. And the March issue of the magazine is on newsstands right now. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.